Welcome to Map It Marketing for small business owners who want to become more confident and capable in their marketing. I'm Rachel Claver, and I'm a small business owner just like you. I've learned that there are so many different things that we are supposed to do all the time. And trying to work it all out is quite frankly often very confusing. In this podcast, we're going to explore what those things are and whether you need to pay attention to them. Ready? Let's get started. Welcome to episode 26 of Map It Marketing. We're at the six month mark of Map It Marketing. And so I think it's only fitting that our journey is talking about someone else's journey about going on journeys. Kat started a business called Getting Lost from her blog with the same name, started by her and her husband and their blended family who used to go on trips around New Zealand getting lost and going for explorations. She wasn't too sure how to monetize that, but then she and her husband decided to create a card game that would help people get lost wherever they were. Forward to today, that business now has 16 different card game varieties and she is selling into places all over the world. America has got their eyes on her and the growth potential for this business is huge. This is an exciting story of someone who never planned for something to go big, but the idea and her passion and hard work and her commitment to using her community has helped her build a business that has so many options of growth and it's incredible to see where it's going. I am looking forward to sharing this story with you. So tune in and listen to Kat talk to us about how she got lost in New Zealand and now she's getting found in the US of A. Hi and welcome to Map It Marketing. I'm not going to tell you what episode it is because quite frankly, I don't know at this point. However, thank you so much for dialing in and listening every week. Honestly, this podcast is made by you for listening. I love hearing your from your emails, your comments on social media, the random messages I get in Facebook groups, hearing how much you love this podcast. It honestly means the world to me because I am currently recording this in my walk-in wardrobe and truly, guys, I had to do like cords to get like power cables and stuff like that. I am committed and it's so nice to see you guys appreciate it. Right. I can't wait to talk to Kat. She is a chatter as much as me. So I think this is going to be great. Kat has a great business. I found on LinkedIn, her business is called Getting Lost, which I immediately liked, but her business is all based around a board game that's also called Getting Lost. And I'm going to let her introduce herself to you and a little bit about how she started it. And then we'll jump into some of the lessons that she's done because she's accomplished something that many of you want to do, which is getting into America. Right. Hi, welcome, Kat. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Um, So I am Kat. Um, I am very much an accidental business owner. Um, I rage launched my business. Um, (laughs) We're going to talk about that because I love the term rage launch. So we'll talk about that later. But let's, let's, so tell me about the business. (laughs) Um, So Getting Lost started out as a travel blog um, and started out about seven years ago when I blended my family with um, my best friends. So we met when we were 12 at a camping ground um, and we were together as much as you can be at 12 um, and then we broke up um, and then we both went off and and had children, did our things and then um, after my marriage ended, um, we decided to, to pick up where we left off. Um, I love that and, story. So, <laughs> yeah, <huge. laughs> uh, so we had a lot of issues, as you do, blending a family and, and coming together. So um, one of the very first things, well, kind of the breakthrough, we had this awful birthday of my youngest daughter and everyone was crying. Um, I was close to tears. James had met my dad for the first time. So they'd gone off um, to meet us where we were going for ice cream. And I was taking James's ute, which in a, in itself is, is slightly challenging. Kids were crying. It was awful. We were carrying car seats down the road. It took us a while to find the car seat, but we found fa- the car, but we found it. We put everything in. And then uh, it was me and mum in the front, kids in the back, and in this ratly old Holden Ute. And um, we got lost. And so me and mum, the kids were squabbling in the back. Me and mum are like, 
And I'm like, I'm fairly sure it just loops around here. And I'm like, I don't think it loops around. And we're like, yeah, no, it is. And, and so then the kids all went quiet in the back and they're like, what's going on? Like parents aren't in control. What What is happening? James is calling me going, where are you? And I'm like, we're lost. And so the kids were like kind of united in this idea of we don't know where we are. And so they had the <laughs> windows open. They were trying to smell the ocean and, oh, and do all this. And it was the first, our first family tradition. It was the first thing that we did together as a blended family. And so every time we went out, every time we had a family event, they would be like, okay, let's get lost. Oh, and it, it kind so of cool. summed it up. Yeah, it was cool. So we, we created a blog um, and we created a Facebook page. And the idea was that we would talk about the cool places that we found. So James um, was living in the Haraki Plains when him and I got back together and he was a part-time kitchen installer. He had full custody of his daughter, um, who was six at the time. Um, And I was working in an Auckland ad agency um, with my two daughters who were five and seven. So we had very different lives. James was used to jumping in water holes and going in and hunting and fishing and gathering. And Auckland kids, not the same. No, (laughs) not the same. And I knew a lot of Auckland restaurants. So we thought, well, we can bring this together and talk about things and maybe talk about some of the, the issues with blending families so we did that and we grew a really big fo- well kind of big following on on Facebook so we had about 10,000 people following us um and so we would get a lot of questions and one of the questions that came in was from someone who had just moved to Waiuru um with her husband from South Africa and he was in the army and she had small kids and she said look I you know I love that you find all these cool places what's cool in Waiuru and I'm like okay have you been to the army museum and she's like yes and I'm like okay cool <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anyone listening in Wairu, but let's be honest. <laughs> no, but at the same time, you kind of went, well, there must be cool things in Wairu. Mm. There must be like these wild horses. Is there a place that they walk past? Is there a clearing with white wildflowers? Is there a waterhole? Is there a road with amazing views? Is there all those a- secret yeah. local things, yeah. right? Yeah. Totally right. So we're like, so but no one can do that. No one can do that as a like a travel blog. You can't know everything but how could we enable that in a world where everyone googles the answer for everything so you know she's already jumped on google and gone mm. what's good in Wairu and and it's come up with the army museum um and maybe a few cafes um and so we couldn't answer it directly but what we tried to do was get out of that mindset of I go to Google, I follow influencers, I ask, there's so much, like so many of our journeys are digitally curated that we've actually forgotten how to just go, I'm going to go out and I'm just going to get lost, like we did that first day. So can I, I I know you're (laughs) um, going to jump in, but I love this because I've got teens and one of the biggest things I have, so my my eldest has gone on OE, she's an adventurer, but my second are 18 and 15, like we'll go, hey, we're going to go and do this cool thing, like go and look at the seals in Kaikoura, want to come away for the weekend? And they're like, we can watch them on on a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so digital's taken over. <laughs> so we had a, a list of criteria. So we went, okay, so it has to be offline because we, we actually to decouple ourselves from that. Mm-hmm. It has to work anywhere. So it has to work in, in Waioro. Equally, it has to work in Auckland. Um, it has that's to be a, different. That's a big call. It is a big call, right? <laughs> and, and it served us really well because it's ended up that it does work in America because it had that kind of that stretch to it. Clever. Um, without us designing it in that way. Um, had to be different every time you played it. So you couldn't play it once and, and then, okay, so I'm going to go to the same place next time. That is, is a bit weird. Um, it had to be simple. It had to be engaging across a whole spectrum. So kids needed to like playing it, but equally their parents needed to like playing it. And weirdly, when we've gone into America, it's a completely different audience. It's not parents with oh. kids. And is it millennials? Pre- it is. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah. And Gen Z. Well, it, even slightly younger. Yeah, Gen Z's, that Gen Z side of space. Yeah, 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 like the 18 to 24. Because I don't know about you. I, I think I'm quite a lot older than you because I'm 50 and you look way younger than that. Like, no, 45 yesterday. Oh, okay, so <laughs> like when we were kids, I was explaining to my kids, you know, like sometimes we would, because then you could get your license at 15 and things like that, um, you know, we my friends would be like, we lived in Auckland, and it would be like, hey, want to go to Tauranga for the day to get a burger? And you'd be like, yeah, let's go do that. My kids think that's super weird. I know, I know, I know, so right? They've missed, that. they've missed that kind of exploring thing. And I'm thinking that's what getting lost does, right? Yeah, totally, totally. So we came up with the cards. Um, so when it, it 
the very first iteration of it, 26 cards. And it's a, we wanted it to be nostalgic. We wanted it to take you back to that time. I mean, I've, I've got ten, three teenagers, teenagers as well, um, and they say the same thing. They're like, your life seemed so much cooler. Like you were able to do all these cool things. It Let's was. be honest. Yeah, it was cooler. <laughs> So it was how do we take the things like when you were rattling around and, and you know, back when we could sit in the back of a station wagon with no seat belts and, and see the world go by in reverse. Um, how do you take that fun? Like what Saturday drives were there? And one of the things that kept coming up to us was like everyone's played a version of the left right game. Like yeah. when you pull up an in section, OK, kids, which way are we going to go? Left. OK, left. And it's like, oh, my God, this is, is the most epic adventure. So it's like, okay, so let's create a game that has 26 of those directions. So left, right, northeast, southwest, um, head to the highest place you can see, head in the direction the wind is blowing. Um, we did some cards as well. So we were quite mindful of the fact that you could go round in a circle and, and that's <laughs> not going to be a lot of fun. And you do sometimes go round in a circle. But we had to add distance cards as well. So get to a main road, um, go on a main road for three exits. Um, and some of our Auckland terminology came in because in the first iteration we put in um, head to a motorway. And, of course, not everywhere has a motorway. And not no. put a motorway. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we had to change that. Um, we put in head in the direction the wind is blowing um, because that gives you a better experience when you get to a beach that the wind's not, you know, mm -hmm. like blowing in your face. So there were some, some kind of mindful things that we did there to try and get both distance and direction um, that would work no matter how people shuffled it. So it, it, while it looks simple, there was some thought. And me and my husband, James, both worked on that. It was a, a cold and miserable day in Auckland. Um, when we we kind of went, right, let's do this, let's make this, and let's launch this. Um, my ambition was to earn $10,000 because that was, was my rage launch. Um, so I had been denied a pay rise after three years of no pay rise. Um, and my ex-husband had stopped paying child support, and both of which I felt was monumentally unfair. Um, and I wanted to take back a little bit of control. So I was like, $10,000 that will make me feel vindicated and that is is my annual target um so we put it up online we obviously had the 10,000 followers on Facebook we didn't expect much um we didn't know much about business my background is is advertising as a strategist um you know you're kind of the worst it's, person in advertising I do think this is one of the things that's really important because people often think that like I actually work with quite a lot of people who are corporate marketers or corporate advertisers and they go oh I know all this stuff from here like my up level here but having a small business is completely different so different right and I just Stop I had the system no, no idea what I didn't know. So we we put it up online and like I just never would have even thought about stock quotas or anything. So we put it up on a Saturday night, went to bed, woke up in the morning and went, oh, I wonder if anyone saw the post, you know, <laughs> like because that's kind of what you were used to. And went and had a look and went, oh, yeah, a few people have commented and stuff. How do we figure out if we've sold anything? So we had to go onto the website because we didn't have any notifications or anything set up. And we sold all these games. And not only have we sold all these games, but we actually sold games that we didn't physically have. We hadn't made them. So we were like, oh, this is like quite a big problem. Um, <laughs> and then later that day, we had our first um our first email from a, a store as well saying, can we stop these? And we're like, what the hell just it's happened? It's so awesome um, though, right? It was, it was super cool. So <laughs> we made our $10,000 in six weeks um, and we like we did sell out overnight on our, our first that day. And so we awesome. kind of, yeah, because when we started, we were 3D printing. Um, oh, so, that's not a great way to have it as a scalable business. <laughs> no. And, and like the crazy thing is we actually did that for a year. Um, wow. Yeah, I know. I know. So we had these awful, we've actually, we've got all the originals. We've kept one of every original that we had. Um, and my brother did, did them to start with. He probably did the first hundred until we literally broke his 3d printing machine which he is still angry at me about um and him and I designed the little cases and stuff it is so gorgeous me. though that is so yeah. absolutely gorgeous um and then we hired a local guy he was a Adam Flatbush and he was I think about 19 Carl he was amazing um and so we grew his business he had one 3d printer when we started he had five when we ended up going to an injection mold um which we did 
after a year because we we um had an offer to be on the project and we were like okay this feels like this is going to go bigger than Cal can do in his par- literally in his parents garage um and it's so gonna- cool though what a great thing for him <laughs> as well right yeah. it's like hey I'm this 19 year old who's going to do this stuff and his parents are like it will never take off and here it is <laughs> yeah that's right that's right and like injection molds really freaking expensive like yeah, they are. Fact- people do not know how they are huge because it's the cast isn't it it's having yeah. to have specific cast and making yeah. those engineered completely right so it doesn't muck up expensive. yeah that's right yeah totally expensive but it changed it from it taking three hours per case um times five obviously so we could reduce them a little bit faster um it gave us endless capability mm-hmm. so um and they print one one each 10 seconds or something like that it's ridiculous it just shoots it in and and it's amazing um but we di- didn't have the capital for that so we had to put it on every single credit card we owned wow! and just cross fingers that it was going to work and that the project would take off and that everything would kind of go and it it did so it was the right call to make um but yeah pretty pretty scary stuff so that would have been one of those um relationship making or breaking moments yeah yeah and my (laughs) husband James is is really um it's good verse yeah, he is. So his parents lost um, not only their business but their family home um, when he was 12 years old. Um, his dad passed away just before. So for him, everything is is tied up in this horrible, um, it was in the 80s share market crash. Yeah, so that's, and that damaged so much, right? Yeah, that's okay. right. But he's, his whole thing has always been, if we don't have the money, we don't do it. So we're bootstrapped. We've, um, we're the same. That's everything on demand. And that is the biggest and probably only risk. We put up three grand when I rage launched it. Um, and then we obviously had to put this up. And we kind of had a plan that, yeah, we, we're we pretty confident. We don't we can't see it right now. But that's, yeah, that's the most that we've extended ourselves. Um, yeah. And everything now, else has been earn it, spend it. I really <laughs> want to hear about America because I, I saw you on LinkedIn and I was like, I have to have you on this podcast because it's so <laughs> inspiring. Because a lot of my clients will say, oh, I want to go export and they try and crack into markets. And often we the first thing we do is Australia because you can go state by state. And we've worked with some people who've gone into America and it's a whole other beast. But first, let's talk about rage launching because my theory around this, because I also identify was a rage launch. Um, I was working for another age, another. Um, company and they cut my commission by 25% to grow their business because I was so, and I was like, that's, this is it, you know. Um, I think rage launching is actually the fact that we actually know in our gut, this is the thing we need to do, but the anger just pushes us across to actually right. trust our gut, gut enough. Would you agree? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's like you need that I was watching I, Tonya, which I, I freaking love as a movie, and her mum would pay someone to yell at her before she skated because she'd skate better. Um, Interesting. <laughs> such a good movie. Um, but, yeah, I was thinking that is like me. I need that little bit of fire in my belly. Otherwise, that apathy kind of sits, like, you know, sinks in. I and like you go, ah, It'd be fine, but unless someone's going to make me do it, either by – an opportunity being so big you can't ignore, which was our America example, mm-hmm. um, or someone making you so angry that you're like, fine, then I'll sh- I'll show you. And I still don't think that my ex-husband knows that that is why I did it. And it's it's my boss doesn't know, although I've talked about it in quite a few interviews recently. So I, I feel like both of them he might, might be working it out. <laughs> but I, I do think that it's not just that rage launch, is it like that pushing in. For me, it's quite often when you realize that you've, built yourself into a situation that you don't have control and it's you saying I take control back because I know for me I often have a bit of a rage thing when I see another marketing I don't I have never admitted this before actually on on so I'm I'm like oh um sometimes every now and again I will watch another person who does what I do and they're doing something and I spend two days getting really angry that they're doing that thing and then I realize it's because I actually need to do it myself yeah and so it's that kind of thing going on too (laughs) 
Yeah, so I had a real moment like that. I'm quite a fan of Porter's Five Forces as a marketing tool. Yes. And I did it for my business, so as in Getting Lost. So I built Getting Lost with no idea where it would go. So it, we now have 45,000 followers, I think, on Facebook. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so Facebook is our big platform and then a couple of thousand on Instagram. But I kind of went... I know, like, I feel like I need to do this, but I don't know why. And I couldn't mm-hmm. articulate to anyone where it was going to go. And I'd done Porter's Five Forces on it. And I'd gone, okay, so I am in a massively crowded market. There are so many travel bloggers. Mm-hmm. I'm not particularly distinctive. Like, you know, I, I'm still, even though I might be going, it's a bit off the beaten track, a bit different. It's not really that different. Um, and there wasn't a huge commercial demand for it. People could kind of dictate their own prices. And I just looked at it and went, well, what am I doing? I am never going to make a cent off getting lost. Um, but I think... At the same time, I never would have made a cent without getting lost. Yes. Because having that community, like that community, so it came from the lady in Wairaru, um, who I sent the first game to. Um, and then every stage of the production, we sense checked it back with the community. So we went, okay, so we're thinking about this game. What do you guys reckon? It's going to look like this. What do you reckon? It's going to have these cards. What do you think? We had feedback forms. So the the first 250 was so, the font was so illegible that it couldn't actually be read. It was so terrible. An easy design mistake to make, hey, because you go, this is pretty. It was pretty. It's practical. Yeah. So pretty. And and so people, I see it sometimes pop up on social media and I know when I see that, that's someone who supported us right from the beginning. And so I always jump on and go, oh my God, you've got a, like an OG game. Do you want me to send you a new one with a font you can actually read? And I've never had anyone take me up on it. They're always like, no, I love that I was mm. first in and that I got the wonky version. Um, I love my battered 3D printed case. <laughs> because I think like, I, I want to take that because you you said something there around the fact you had that community and I do think that it's really important to acknowledge that because listening to your ga- your, your story it does feel like an overnight success a little bit but it's because you already had that community yeah. and and I do think from like one of my breakthroughs for me as a marketer was realizing that there was a whole lot of stuff I wanted to do to do those things I had to build a community first and then I would have the liberty to do it like people would go I want to do a course or I want to sell a product you can start it from the here and build up, you know, from the beginning, but it's hard, a lot harder than to do what you did, even if it was accidental, which was create a community and then sell to them or a following. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, I there is no products. We have 16 games now, um, 16 getting lost games. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. There is not a single one that we haven't launched with the community behind us. Yeah, um, so we launched an at-home version last March um our printer called us on the Thursday night and said look this it feels all like there's going to be a lockdown or something's going to happen have you thought about an at-home edition I'm like I haven't but that's an amazing idea let me run it past our Facebook community which at that stage was probably about 30,000 um and see what they think so I did on the Friday and they're like yes do it that would be amazing so then I'm like okay so we're going to do it give me ideas, like, let me know, what do you, what do you guys want to see in it? So everyone would fill in the ideas. Every single game we've made is filled with ideas that people have come up with. So they're not just ours and they come from the community. So everyone came back with it on the Friday and then I spent Saturday designing it. I contacted our printer that night. So it's the same printer we've had the whole time. She's amazing. Um, and said, how quickly can you print it? And she's like, well, I, I can start printing now and you can start pr- picking up on Monday. So we went, okay, cool, we've got it. So we pre-launched it on Sunday night, said we're making an at-home edition, we'll start shipping tomorrow. Um, the Monday was the day that Jacinda announced we were going into level four lockdown. Um, so we went and picked them up from the printers. We started pack, like furiously packing. We did a massive order of games. We did like, I can't remember how many thousands and just went, let's just take a chance on it. Um, we spent 48 hours packing and sending out games before the restrictions meant we couldn't send anything. So we literally launched and sold a game in a five-day period. That is incredible. Yeah, community and partners. And coming from a traditional agency background, so 20 years in working in advertising and media, um, you're often trying to sell something that is you're having to retrofit back to a consumer. Yes. 
Yes. Versus going, this has come from my audience. It's it's theirs as much as it is mine. Mm. Um, and it's it's always been that way. Um, the my dog's edition. This is my latest game. Um, so on the back of I that, think I'm going to get that one. I've got three dogs. You're talking yeah. to someone who's converted. Yeah. So <laughs> the back, these ones, these are all of our followers' dogs. Oh my gosh! So horrible. Cute, eh? And and our one is is the on there too. Um, <laughs> but we just went out and said, like, what do you guys want to see? And like, mate, and I put it up as a post and went. Like we've never done this before because all so I'm a photographer as well. All the photos on the back are always mine. And I'm like, no one will want their dog on the back of our game. I'm like, no, that's a silly idea. And so I put it up and said, Hey, look, we're making this dog's edition. We're just about to send it to the printers. We're like a couple of days away from it. And I'm like, what do you need? Like, this is if, this is silly, that's fine. Would anyone like their dog on the back of it? Oh no, and, you would, because your dogs yeah. are like, you know, it's like having a, it's like having proof that your dog is the best dog out of everybody's. Yeah. So we had like 200 dogs. Oh, no. 200 that dogs. That a like, problem. How? <laughs> <laughs> so we had to do then a people's choice and go, okay, so tell us we chose half of the dogs ourselves because we went, okay, that's usually the, the kind of ratio we work to. We'll dictate and curate half of it um, and then we'll let the community decide the other half and we'll kind of put a few of our mm. own little tweaks on that. Um, so we made each of, of the cards. We mocked them up as actual getting lost cards times 200 um, and put them up on the page and said, okay, so vote. What do you guys want? Um, and we got our our getting lost dogs. So we've got 15 uh-huh. getting lost dogs now. <laughs> so because tell me, like, so for you, um, you did get into America. What was that process for you? I mean, obviously you had that information and, and you've got this really vibrant community. I love how you've taken one idea and then basically spied it or spiraled around that to get a whole lot of other ideas, but staying really tightly still in your niche. How'd you get into America from there? Absolute dumb luck. Okay, um, fantastic. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. <laughs> so we had kind of, we like much like you were saying, we had identified Australia as our next kind of, market to conquer um we had even gone so far as to order we have an Aussie edition um and we'd ordered 2000 of the Aussie edition and we were like right let's go for Australia that's going to be our this year makes sense yeah it does make sense and you know similar to us in America felt dodgy especially with like we're telling people to get lost we're giving them directions imagine if they like drive off a cliff they could sue us it's like yeah absolutely yeah (laughs) not not happening at all and and we kind of talked to a few people and some people had said yes no we were like no we're just not not going there um so in February and I still remember when I wrote this post so I was sitting at the nail salon getting a pedicure and I was like oh Crystal and I had been on this really cool getting lost adventure just the two of us and we'd found all these cool things. We hadn't spent much money and we'd ended up spotting dolphins. Like we just ended up being at the right place just as the sun was setting. It was Mill Pond. It was at Uccles mm-hmm. Bay. And then a pot of dolphins went through and it's like, you can't make this shit up. Like it's just, it's amazing. So we were like, okay, cool. I, I was sitting there getting my toes done. And I thought, I might post that because it's, it's such a nice memory of mine as well. And we played mm-hmm. getting lost in. So I thought, I'll post that. So I, I posted it and we got really good engagement on it. And I was like, oh, well, I'll keep I'll keep put a bit of boost budget behind it. I'll put like five dollars boost budget. And so I did. And then a couple of weeks later, and so that's still going out with its little boost budget. And um it was like a, a Monday and we started getting emails from people saying, Do you ship to America? And I'm like, no, we don't ship to America. So I'm writing back, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. And I'm like, we're getting an awful lot of these. And so then I checked the site traffic and the site traffic's just gone like mental. And it's all coming from America. And I'm like, something has gone on. I'm like, I don't know what has gone on, but clearly something's gone on. And and it, it was at the point where it was like, I can't ignore this. I'm going to have to do something. So I had a look. With, we're with New Zealand Post for our shipping locally and I had a look at their rate card rate and it was $25 to ship to America and I'm like well I'll just put it up at $25 shipping and it's $25 for a game so I'm like no one's going to buy it but at least then I've done mm-hmm. something so I did that and people started buying it and I'm like what the actual hell so I'm like called New Zealand Post we have an amazing rep there and said this has happened we don't know why America mm-hmm. likes us right now but it's 
they do and and we need to kind of capture this and so she was like okay so I can do this as an interim step with your rates which got our postage down to $18 and we're like okay cool let's do that and just like so this is literally within 24 hours Mm. so we did that and we started sending out everywhere um and then we like she we negotiated more got it down to $16 which is still where we're at we're still at $16 postage which is is ridiculous and people are buying it but but realistically, let's just go back to that. Like a lot of those card games, they're quite expensive. Like they can be 50 bucks. So actually it's not that much really, is it? And it's New no. Zealand dollars, right? Yeah, this is New Zealand dollars. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and that's the feedback that we had was that your game is really cheap, but your postage is really expensive. And if we had a website, a US website, we could have fixed that. We yes. could have upped the game, lowered the postage. But because we had, like we weren't prepared at all, we kind of just <laughs> had to do what we did. And you've seen the map, right? Of, of yeah. The yeah, it's crazy. Insane. Like, it's crazy. And one of our um, our biggest kind of con- – oh, actually, before I talk about our biggest concern, we did figure out where it came from. Um, so it came from someone – and this, to me, was such a big learning. It came from someone who had bought our standard edition, and they had bought it in New Zealand, mm. um, in the North Island, and I can't remember the town, but it's a small town. And they had, because we posted about it and went, oh, my God, this has happened. We don't know how. But And then someone else came back and said, oh, you know, we saw that. Someone posted it on a page called Girls Love Travel, oh. which has a million following. Large wow. Based. And so they had received it and gone, wow, this is really cool. I'm going to share it on this page. And they shared our post which we were then promoting, which was going to look alike audiences two weeks after they'd bought it. So Amazing. how important is that to have look alike audiences? Absolutely. Because- and and actually it's interesting you say that because one of the things I want to talk about here, because I love Facebook ads, is look alike audiences have had a battering from the iOS 14 changes, yeah. except for the lookalike audiences that come from the activity that stays on Facebook and Instagram. And so sharing to groups, having things shared to groups and all those sort of things is the most powerful way to use those lookalike audiences, which is totally fantastic that you're doing that. So I'm also quite pleased as it means that you're doing really great ads as well, which makes me happy because I got a little bit stressy when you you mentioned the word boost, got to admit, but now I feel a lot better. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so we are we are targeted in the way that we um that we promote things. So um yeah, so we found out we obviously sent her some games and she was completely oblivious to what she had kind of oh, how gorgeous. Said, Thank you so much. You are amazing. Um and yeah, so that was was our launch into the States. Um the big issue after that, we'd obviously we'd had 24 hours where we'd had the most traffic mm-hmm. and no ability to sell. Mm-hmm. So the big challenge was recapturing that audience. Um, so getting out really quickly with some retargeting to everyone who had been to our page, interacted with our post. Um, we still have that same post. So that post was March that it went out. Um, we put boost budget behind it, only $10 a day. We've spent less than $10,000 in the US market. Um, and we just, we have a lookalike audience in the States um, that we just go out to. It gets, it has been shared over 40,000 times now. That's amazing. Uh, I know, organic reaches in the, the millions um, and just a ton of comments. Um, it is really young. It is not the same audience that we have in New Zealand at all. Um, it is a really young audience. So like an 18 to 29. Um, which yeah, the real really Gen Z audience. audience. Who love yeah. playing games. Like they yeah, do actually right. love having screen free time. That's right. That's right. And just something different. Like it's all about, you know, let's do let's do this one weekend. Um, let's go on a road trip, you know, want to hang out with you. Um, our biggest selling games have been the sum, summer edition, um, the girls' road trip edition, which we so we've launched adults only games this year as well. That's so a, good we've idea. a girls' road trip edition and a date night edition, which is doing mm-hmm. really because they do that I assumed that the at home one would have done really well there the at home one actually hasn't sold that well Interesting. Yeah, I know Interesting. because we're not in that parents market and like when you look at that map and go oh my god how many have we sold but we're not in that parents market so there's so much more scope and but you could do an at home for that age group 
you could, you could. Because that's supposed to go home, right? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> they all have social anxiety. They're all too scared to do anything. They just want to stay at home forever. <laughs> I know, I know, right? So, and at least this like kind of gives them close to home things. Like it's, we had um, after, because everything kind of comes in waves, right? So we have the initial, you know, oh my God, this is has gone quite viral and we've sold a whole bunch of games. Then they land in the States. And then people start playing it, start talking about it, and you get another wave. So we had another wave that came off TikTok. Um, with a so guy are you called, using TikTok? Um, I've actually handed it over to my kids. Um, oh, and so that's a good I idea. Think, so are they doing it? Yeah, they are doing it. Um, I'm not, going to have to go, not, we'll put a link in. Yeah, not particularly well, to be honest. Um, but we, so the one that went, that we had the most success with, um, that had 500,000 views over a weekend. Um, so, and that was from a guy called Aaron, um, who was playing it in Springfield, Missouri, um, with his friend, he's 19. And he just, he just did cool teenage stuff. They just drove around for the day and they kind of filmed it and it was really cool. And off the back of that, we launched into Canada, the UK, and that, Amazing. funnily enough, was our launch into Australia. Because I just uh, actually did a quick little <laughs> search on TikTok and there's all these hashtags with the Getting Lost game on it. There's around 4,000, um, but they are random people who are actually just sharing um, using your Getting Lost game, not just your ones, which is really cool, but there are actually quite a lot of people who are using that as well. Yeah, so we actually had one where someone had made their own Getting Lost game. They copied all of our cards, and, and we have copyright. So we have a trademark in the US, UK. I'm looking at my wall where they all are. <laughs> so US, UK, um, Australia, and New Zealand, we have trademarks. And people are going, oh, you, you need to say something to them. That's awful. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is so freaking flattering that someone, like, they just made them themselves on these little cards. And I'm like, that's great that someone wants to spend, like, four hours of their time yeah, making it it'd be different if it was like a big company making it but yeah the, no I agree know, a random person it was it was pretty cool so and I think like it, while I go it was dumb luck that we were there we had that social presence we had that you had the community with, right we had the and it all starts and they the protect community. you yeah that's right and they advocate for you so mm-hmm. your our customers are so freaking cool like they are the most passionate advocates that we could possibly have and they do amazing things for us all the time um and the opportunities that it sets up so we had a, a call um a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago from a big us retailer who we had pinged in their algorithm because of the facebook stuff so we're in conversations with them so that's exciting just don't know where something's going to go just by jumping on an opportunity like I could have looked at all that US traffic and gone you know I'm we're still doing a day job um I had a, I can't even remember what I was pitching for at that stage but it was something and I'm like I am just too busy for whatever yes. I didn't even know what it was it's just like there's a whole bunch of traffic could it be something I don't know uh, should I chase it down maybe um but you've just actually got to go, just go, okay, the opportunity is here right now. I may be busy. I may not sleep this week. I don't think I did sleep that week, um, you know, but I'm just going to go because I don't know where this will go. Because I, I had made some assumptions actually that you had actually gone and found a distributor and you weren't printing them. You are still making everything in New Zealand. Like it's a made in New Zealand product at the moment, Absolutely. right? At the moment, we just actually this morning um, had, a conversation about US printing but you um, might have to because it would it would make it cheaper right that makes it easier for you to have it there and and the distribution just yeah so I can understand that um because I do think that's the next step as often as is actually getting the the things printed in the country where it's getting out makes it easier for people don't want to wait for shipping you know we've got this issue with COVID where shipping is a pain in the ass (laughs) at all times yeah. um and so I think that that you know that helps it I, it's exciting because you're basically this wasn't the game plan was it like you were just basically running with the um the opportunity you're opening your eyes to opportunity running testing the waters slightly and then pushing against it as it grows yeah 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 from a rage launch where I wanted to make 10,000 yeah, pretty dollars. good to um, some fairly major conversations in the States. So um, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask a question? So in terms of marketing, are your, uh, what are you doing? Are you doing Instagram and Facebook still yourself? Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, advertising is uh, like that's my safe space. So yes. um, that is one thing that I know. Um, and strategists in an advertising sector are, are probably some of the most useless people because um, you come up with big ideas and other people implement them on your behalf. So, yes, I know. Um, it is very different, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm having to actually do all the implementation myself, and I'm I'm not the best at it, like to be perfectly honest. But I do know a lot of people who are really good at it. Um, and again, it's opportunity. So I'm working with the University of Auckland, and um, we're going to do something with their um, their graduate program. Um, oh. So you know, with their digital marketing, so it's leveraging, it's filling in the the gaps that you don't have. Um, my mm-hmm. sister now works for us as our operations director. Oh, awesome! Uh, <laughs> so and she hires. So we have a team of students who help us make games and send them out. Um, so yeah, so it's filling in the bits that you can't do. So the advertising to me is always about easy. It's always been instinctive mm-hmm. because it's always community led. Um, and you know, I break every Facebook rule. Um, I was listening to one of your podcasts earlier today, um, with the the guy who's got the amazing Instagram following. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I break all the rules. Facebook is always like going caution. Your text is too long, and I'm like, yeah, that's because we have a product that has no category that it belongs to. Travel adventure games aren't a thing. Real world games aren't a thing. Um, so we. We have to explain and like we have this amazing dialogue backwards and forwards. If I've tried putting up short form, doing all the things that you should do and it doesn't work for us. Mm. Um, So, you know, we kind of, we break a lot of rules. So carousel ads would work really well for you though, like carousel posts, because you've got lots of static. Because you've got those steps, you could actually go, um, I was actually going to say to you, there's a podcast that I did with Jubbly, I was going to tell you later about Tina, um, she did a really cool pin the other day. She did one about um, time for small adventures. And I was thinking, man, wouldn't that be a cool collab? Jubbly umph doing your designs on the back and you doing the thing around let's go on a small adventure. Like those kind of ideas, like I think you've got such a cool product that you can so easily go, I'll go here or here. And actually it's funny because your product is actually how you're also running your business. You're going on a magical mystery tour with your business a little bit, right? Yeah, we actually, we had an interview with um, with Jesse Mulligan on Radio New Zealand a couple of yes. years ago, and he's just sitting there shaking his head at me. It's like, you're, it's like you're getting lost in business. He's like, you're actually doing this. And I'm like, yeah. And it, and it hasn't changed a couple <laughs> no. years later, still doing the same. So what's oh, next for you? So you've, you've got the potential for printing in the US. You're growing that. You're growing the markets. Um, yeah. Are you, is this your full-time job now? Are you still working as well? No. So is the goal to come out of that for you? Oh, you probably want to say that on the podcast. <laughs> but do you see that being, do you do you want it to, because you, you're employing people too, are you wanting to just keep on going and seeing how far you can make this happen? Like regardless of, I don't want to talk about getting into trouble with your employer. So <laughs> let's, let's leave that. But are you wanting to, are you wanting to just grow it as much as you can or do you want to put some limits on it? Um, yeah, so it's, it's a really good question. And it's actually something I've, grappled with so for a long time so I've left my job in agency in um, May of this year and I now work um, for I guess I can say because it's on LinkedIn Um, I work for NZ On Air who are a freaking amazing um, and I work 30 hours for them Um, and to be fair I probably work 30 hours on my business as well but when I was in my agency (laughs) just don't sleep just don't sleep I don't sleep Um, when I was in my agency gig I was petrified always that um they would find out that how successful it was and it it would kind of limit me because I was still working 40 hours and and there's a different culture there and when we went on the project and I was like great everyone's going to see it and I'm like maybe I just won't talk about it and then someone found out and shared it with the whole agency and I'm like oh my god and then my boss the irony um the one who wouldn't give me a pay rise bought one of the games and I'm like oh my god it's it's everything's over I'm like, <laughs> you know um the secret's I, out this is worse than porn no <laughs> right and even when I left I don't think they knew how big it was and I, I had um so one of my clients was the warehouse and um and I, so I strategist for them and I got an order through last Christmas from one of my the marketing clients and I'm like oh. do they know it's me and I'm like I don't think they know it's me I'm like and what do I do and so I talked to the account director and I'm like should I say something she's like 
you absolutely should say something. So I did. I was like just one-on-one to her like, oh, so you bought some games. I've seen you in some freebies as well because that's actually me. And she's like, oh, my God, is it? So no one knew. No, How and- awesome though, right? Well, yes and no. I think it made this really uncomfortable position for me Mm -hmm. in that there were some days where I would literally, I would get home from work, I would spend time with the kids, and then I would work till three or four in the morning. Um, I would hard thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. I would be crying at my desk going, I, I, no, it's not good long term, but I was, I couldn't find a way out of it. And, Mm -hmm. So when I interviewed for this new role, I was really upfront. I said, look, I have this business. um, And at that stage, we hadn't looked. So I interviewed in February and none of the US stuff had happened. So you can see what happened. Yeah, absolutely. um, (laughs) Which had that have happened, I don't know what I would have done. Um, I probably would have said no, because I wouldn't have been in a position to take on something new. Um, And so, yeah, so I, I kind of had... Yeah, I had gone into it going, look, I have this priority as well. I have my kids, I have my business, mm-hmm. and I do want to work for you, but there has to be some limits. And that's just the most sensational company to work for. So they were were amazing about that. Um, and then obviously all the US stuff happened. And then I was like, oh, I'm not going to tell them. Same thing, right? And then I thought, do you know what? This is, is stupid. This is, you can't like keep like. Oh, you have to be who you are and just you know. trust it, right? You do. So I I did the LinkedIn post, um, which is the first time that a lot of people that I have known for a really long time would even know that I had Amazing. a sideline business, um, which is, is too big to be called a sideline, to be honest. Um, it's a business. I think we just is. have to yeah. just, just come to terms with it. Rage <laughs> if you need to, yeah. come to terms with it. <laughs> yeah so I did the LinkedIn post which was amazing the like the like the response that I got was incredible mm-hmm. and um then I also at our our company whip I'd had this meeting with this big US retailer and I thought do you know what because we talk about what we've done on the weekend and I'm like yeah I did this yeah. on the weekend holy hell and um and so my boss was amazing like again most amazing people they're like so how long until you leave and I'm like Back to your original question, my aspiration is not to run a multinational global company. It's just Mm -hmm. not. I wanted to make something cool and prove a point that I could do it. I think we've done that bit. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, it's fun. Like, I've made 16 games. That's a lovely thing. We've 250 cards. Mm -hmm. And the feedback I get, like, on a daily basis from people going, this has connected me with my kids, with my grandkids, with my partner. We do proposal Mm -hmm. cards. We've been involved in 10 proposals. Oh, how gorgeous. So cool. Like, it fills my cup. So Mm -hmm. I was able to say back to them, look, my intention is is not to resign in in six months' time. but at the same time, I'm like ridiculous when someone puts a challenge in front of me, I can't not do it. So I'm kind of like chasing that down and doing that. But you like you have to, the thing I found is you just have to be strict. Like I'm sitting right now in my getting lost office. Um, I bought this T-shirt. I, I love that T-shirt. So for those who can't see it, it says this is my <laughs> stay at home and run my small business tea, which I think is awesome. I think <laughs> it's such a great T-shirt. Which did, did you get it from somewhere? I did, I did. So it's a company that's just launched. I will find the link. Oh, and, um, we'll put it in because I think it's awesome. Yeah, I actually, yeah. we have an office and I still want to stay at home. So I, I like I'm in my wardrobe, so I think I need to have a tea as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, that's all huge. So if people want to, uh, to buy your game or have a look at what you're doing, where would they find it? Uh, so gettinglost.co.nz um, is us. So you can go in and check out everything there. If you want to follow us on Facebook, um, it's just Getting Lost NZ. Okay. Um, and you'll find us there. You'll see a few um, drunken bath time rants from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, to- why wouldn't someone want to watch for that? I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I usually don't do video. It's usually ah, a very long text. Oh, you should do it on video, I think, on bath time rants. As long as there's no nudity, we're fine. I know. No one no. needs to see that. No, no. That sounds <laughs> awesome. Um, Kat, it's been such a pleasure. I'm really excited to see what happens as it grows and evolves because, you know, you are using a getting lost idea, really, and just – going with it but thanks for sharing such an inspiring story today it's been absolutely lovely and I I know that everyone's going to love listening to it yay
Oh, Kat was so full of energy and so inspiring. I loved hearing her passion for a business that has evolved and created its own thing. And I think one of the things I've learned from doing these podcasts is sometimes people have this luckiness around who they are, but the ones that have that luckiness often have spent years cultivating a really strong, engaged community before they launch. And it is a really good reminder to those of us who are struggling, who started at ground zero, that there's two ways to grow your business. One is to have your community and then launch your business into that community, if they fit and if it's engaged enough and it fits right. Or the other way is to launch your business and then work really hard to build that community. Both those ways help propel a growth that helps your business go. We need our family around us. We need the family of our fans, of our clients, and of our potential clients around us to help move our business forward. If you want to be part of my little family on Facebook, Muppet Marketing, I'd love it if you came along and be part of that. You can come and ask questions, get support and help. And in there too, there's often discounts and little specials and things as well. But Otherwise, let's just talk about a few things from the story. One, I really liked the fact that it was bootstrapped. And I think it's really important that when you're starting a business, it is important to be careful not to invest huge amounts of money in things until you're ready. Um, The second thing is sometimes you will need to put money into it. And it's about taking that calculated risk. But you do need to have that that conversation, especially when you've got a partner or things like that, to make sure that you're both happy to make that step and understanding those risks. And then the other thing is, is that working through an action plan of how you're going to change your market and, and how mistakes might happen and you need to have contingencies for that as you grow and develop. It's important to understand that those don't define you. Um, nearly as much as the successes. Now, I I love the fact that I met Kat originally from LinkedIn. I saw her originally on a LinkedIn post and I was like, hey, I need to talk to this person. And that's great because next week we are going to be talking to Michelle Raymond. Actually, her name is Michelle J. Raymond, let me be clear. And she is a specialist in LinkedIn company pages. And boy, she changed my mind, guys. She changed my mind on how I feel about LinkedIn company pages. So if I've ever talked to you about how I think they're a waste of time, if you've ever thought they're a waste of time, this is a podcast you need to listen to with your service-based business or a product-based business. Tune in next week to find out why Michelle J. Raymond tells us that you need a company product page. Thanks for tuning in today to Map It Marketing with me, Rachel Claver. Make sure you hit subscribe in your podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you want notes or information about today's podcast, go to rachelclaver.com slash podcast for more information. 